a battle over dinner. Many women are still getting stuck in the kitchen doing a majority of dinner prep. The never ending chore comes with a lot of pressure and can create tension for couples. Journalist Meg St. Esprit is here to talk about how to create healthy expectations at the table. And Meg, I, this is something that we, I think, all experience from time to time. Some people more regularly. What inspired you to write this article? You know, actually, my editor at Gloria, which we were just talking about, is a new publication for women that are like middle age. There's so much geared for younger women, so much geared for, you know, retirement age women. So at Gloria, they're really focusing in on us that are in our late 30s, 40s, 50s, and we're in the throw of this. Right. Really just in the thick of dealing with, you know, activities, sports, managing. dinner, managing, exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, my editor came to me and said, what's up with dinner? dig into this topic a little bit. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of a broad ask, but I was excited about it because, you know, we have four kids. We both work full time. I have a great husband. It's still a fight for us. And it is this kind of thing that sometimes we just take on a task because as a woman, we think it's our responsibility to manage the household in addition to whatever else our responsibilities are. Yeah, exactly. I think that's really the shift. You know, in the 80s, I had one of the only moms that worked full time out of my friends. And so most of them were home doing homemaking tasks. And then we shifted to more women going back into the workforce, but we never really shifted our ideas of who manages dinner. I mean, right. a Gallup poll in 2020 said even in households, you know, regardless of who works, who doesn't, if we're looking at male, female households with kids, 51% of the time women prepare more dinner. 45% of the time they shop more, and 42% of the time they're doing the dishes more. Only 30% of households are splitting it evenly right now. That's, I, mean, I, I feel, and I don't even know if lucky is the right word, I feel lucky that I have a partner who understands yeah. the division of household labor because it really does have to be an even split. And he cooks, like very lucky, but it, it's not just the dinner time. It's like you mentioned, the meal prep, it's thinking ahead, the grocery shopping, it's everything that goes into it. Yeah, it's not just one task. I think we look at it as what can I put on the table tonight, but it's do I have all the ingredients? Right. Do we have time to make it between soccer and this and that and you know everything that's going on this evening? So for us, often it comes down to we might have planned out what we're cooking for the week, but who has the time to actually put it on the stove? And then do we have time to clean it up? Um, involving kids in that is something that we've been trying to do. You know, our kids have a couple go-to meals, but they got to be older to do that. Right. And you mentioned some of these stats from the Gallup poll. Why do you think that we're still in this same place? You know, for me, and again, my mom worked full time, but when I, when I look back, I see that we saw that modeled for us. You know, most of us that are in middle age now, our moms were at home and our dads were working. And so obviously it fell that way into those more traditional roles. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know if we ourselves have been able to let go of the idea that it's our responsibility. Yeah, there's still this hidden, I don't know, this pressure, and sometimes it's not hidden. Um, I, I saw a social media video the other day and it was basically like, if your family comes over and the house isn't clean, who are they gonna think is responsible exactly. for the house not being clean? And they're gonna oftentimes look to the wife or the mother. Yeah. Instead of thinking, oh, well, guess you've had a busy week for both of you. you or know? that we all live here. And yes, exactly. Yeah. Let's talk about the mental load too that comes with all of this. It's like that extra chore that has to be done. Yeah, I think that's, you know, it's one that can't be pushed to the wayside. Like you can maybe push laundry a couple days, you know, sometimes you can go buy a pack of new socks rather than getting all your kids stuff washed for the week or whatnot. But with dinner, I mean, unless you're going to order out every night, which who can afford to nowadays, right? It has to be done. It has to be solved. And so it's finding those little hacks that work, the little things you can let go that make it not feel like you need to have this gourmet meal on the dinner table every night. Do you find, because as a journalist, but you're really focusing in on these very human things that affect us all. Yeah. Do you find that you carry those conversations back home and start to have those conversations about how can we make this better for us too after you've done some of the research? Sometimes, I mean, we do joke about, you know, the cobbler's kids have no shoes. Yeah. Um, same, my husband's a therapist, <laughs> same thing. You know, we have things that we say that we don't always manage to do in our household so well. But I do think some of this we've been able to apply. Like, we got a cookbook that is geared for families mm -hmm. and we took it to the store. And my daughter, who really likes to cook, my 10 year old daughter, picked out a couple of things she wanted to make that were pretty simple. And so that was one thing that we're like, okay, she can make breakfast for dinner and she enjoys it. It's not putting right. that task on her. Right. And do you think um, there's anything that we can all apply 
at home to start to have this conversation, to change things, to change the dynamic a little bit? Yeah, a couple of the experts I talked to, and I talked to two really great authors, Gemma Hartley and Lisa Sellen Davis, they both have written recent books about really the mental load, womanhood, working motherhood, to chunk the task. Instead of saying who's in charge of dinner tonight, divide it up into, you know, who's grocery shopping this week, or even who is adding things to the Walmart or Instacart app, because it can be as simple as that. Right. And then dividing, you know, who has time this evening to put this in the crock pot or put this on the stove. And one thing that was really important for me was hearing them say, dinner doesn't have to be a whole thing. If it is, you know, there's girl dinner, there's simple dinners, there's what we call rat dinner, which is scurry around and find whatever you oh, can. Oh, I saw this, yes. I love that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if it means, I mean, <laughs> my kid had a cheese stick, watermelon, and shredded cheese for dinner the other night. It's a lot of protein, fine. Yeah, dairy, like, calcium, yeah. perfect. I was like, okay, that's what we had time for tonight. You know, and then the next night, maybe we'll have something that's more sit down. But letting go of that pressure, we don't live in a society where it's really designed to have a home-cooked, prepared, sit-down dinner every night. Yeah, let it go. You have all the food groups and checking off every single list, let go of the expectations. Yeah, I mean, if you're all sitting at the table talking, does it really matter what's on your plate? Yeah, as long as they're eating and you're, yeah, reconnecting. Yeah. It's a perfect way to look at it. Thank you. I, like, felt myself take that. <laughs> let it go. Like, just let it go. Yeah. Thank you so much, Meg. And I'm so interested to find out more about Gloria, too. If you're interested in reading more of Meg's work, we'll have a link on our website at kdka.com slash talkpittsburgh. Coming up on the show, it's more than a store. How you can shop for holiday gifts while making sure your purchases are empowering the artisans behind each item.